Well, good morning, everyone. We've got a nice balmy, uh, I believe it was 88 degrees and 80% humidity this morning. What kind of place is this? Uh, we're gonna do something a little different today. We noticed when we did our inspection, the rear diff had water intrusion in there. It had a little bit of water mixed with the differential oil. So we're gonna go ahead and service that out, change that out. And while we are we got it up on the lift, we're gonna do a brake job on it. So kind of give you guys some pointers on an easy way to do that. And I realize that some of you are, you know, your abilities are beyond this, but you know, some of you aren't. So, you know, we're gonna try to help everyone out here. I did kind of cheat on you guys a little bit. I had it apart last week. I ran the, the drums down to O'Reilly's and had them turned. Um, they'll do it for you. I think they're 20 bucks a piece to have them returned. Um, give you a fresh surface for your new brake shoes. While I was in there, I did notice that I had a wheel cylinder leaking. So I went ahead and picked up a new wheel cylinder. Another thing I'd like to go over, I have these Ford, these are the Ford service manuals directly from Ford. I have the powertrain, drivetrain book. Uh, here's the body and chassis book. And then the electrical and vacuum troubleshooting guide. And it, it pretty much has all your wiring diagrams in it. This thing is awesome when you're trying to chase down uh, electrical issues. So I've got a set of brake shoes, um, a brake hardware kit. There's my wheel cylinder I picked up. Try and use gloves. The brake cleaner is pretty harsh chemical. Plus this brake dust is, it, it's not good for you. So um, you'll be on the TV with your mesothelioma, mesothelioma lawsuit. You may be entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> so just basic tools. You're gonna need a 7 16 deep socket, um, some 13 millimeter sockets. This is what I use to get these brake springs off with. It's just an old screwdriver. The tip was broke off. Um, I cut a groove in it and I'll show you when, once we start doing that, how that, how that works. My, my favorite die grinder here, uh, with the scrubbing pad on it. Another thing I want to go over, I see a lot of confusion on these rear diff tags. These top numbers, um, S is for Sterling. So it's a Sterling 10 and a quarter is what the rear axle is. So you have your S for Sterling. The 10 two is for 10 and a quarter. If it was a 10 and a half in the, um, 99 up super duties, it would say 10.5 there. Um, we do have a 410. The L designates that it's a limited slip. You can't really see the four in there, but there's four L10. So that stands for 410 ratio, limited slip. Um, the 4J15, the four is the year model. So 94, J is the month. J is the 10th letter in the alphabet. So that falls with October, that this axle was assembled October 15th of 1994. The S169N, the 169 is just essentially the model number that, that Sterling designates. The N is just that particular model or sub model of that model 169. So we're gonna start by draining the rear diff here getting all this nasty fluid out. We'll pull the axles and hubs out, you know, get all everything disassembled and have a look in there. And glad you guys are here to join along and hope you get some information out of it. All right, so um, 13 millimeter on these bolts. Um, we're gonna start and just do the bottom first. Um, we're gonna leave these top two in. There is no drain plug on these, so you're gonna have to drain it through the cover. All right, now that we got those out, um, get a nice stiff scraper. Gonna work it in there. Um, it's not supposed to look like chocolate milk, so. <laughs> when we did our, our inspection video on this truck, we just noticed that it was pretty chocolatey looking and that's just a sign of water intrusion, so. That's probably my least favorite smell in the world. <laughs> it is old gear oil. <laughs> what we'll do is uh, just let this finish draining. We'll get started on the brakes. We'll see if we can't get this cleaned up and cleaned out a little better after it stops draining. All right, guys. So like I said before, I kind of cheated. I had these drums turned and so I've, I've backed off 
the brakes a little bit earlier. So these brakes aren't really in too bad of shape. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace everything just so you guys can see what's going on. Here's where your 7 16 deep well comes in. This pin goes all the way through the back side and there's a nut back there. Here's where this screwdriver with the notch I've got cut into it comes into play. Um, you'll have these retaining springs on the shoe with this bent kind of hook nail looking retainer. So I just push in on that spring. And release that retaining spring. There's that hook retainer. Um, our hardware kit comes with all new pieces for that. Same thing on the other side. Just push it in, let it release. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get under here. There's a little um, spring on your brake adjustment lever. Just pop that off, It'll allow you to lift up on that lever. It's got a bigger hole. So it'll slider it off. There's that that, that spring. Um, once that's done, then you can pull your brake adjustment out of there. Once that's all done, your shoes are ready to come out. So I like to just come under here, release the bottom one. Um, that allows you to take it all out in one assembly. Common thing on these is the, the, this return spring on the on your emergency brake cable. I'll be broken. They get kind of bound up in there sometimes and rub on the drum and it just rubs the spring in two. Kind of keep an eye out for that. Make sure it's all in one piece. You can pop that a whole assembly off just like that. And that's essentially how we're gonna work on it when we put the new cable in there and we'll put some grease in there, get everything lubed up. I just wanna make sure, take the time to make sure my wheel cylinder is not leaking anywhere. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. We're gonna grab a wire brush, kind of run that around there. Be careful with this dust. All right, we got everything kind of blown out of there. Um, gonna hit it with some brake clean real quick. Kind of wipe it down. Um, we will do it again. I'm just kind of getting started here. this apart I noticed that this uh, wheel cylinder started started leaking we're gonna go ahead and replace that get all the brake assembly back in get everything adjusted and go from there so um, pull your pins out make sure you're using one of the tubing flare nut wrenches 7 16 pop the brake line out of there all right so a couple bolts holding the cylinder on 3 8 All right, there's our old one. Match it up, make sure you got the right one. There is a left and a right side. Throw your new cylinder back in there and put your bolts back in. All right, now that you've got it in there, um, crack that bleeder and let that cylinder fill up. You'll start getting brake fluid out the bleeder once that cylinder is filled up. That'll help you out when you're bleeding the brakes, if you can get a lot of this air out right now. Got our brake shoes here ready to go. Um, just wanted to go over back to the sill glide. Like I said in the previous videos, I use this stuff for quite a few things. Um, you'll see on your backing plate, these little areas right here where the shoes actually sit. Well, it's a rub area. So a little bit of this silicone base grease Not getting carried away, but what this is gonna do is allow that stuff to move freely like it's supposed to. All right, now, like I've said before, there's 15 different ways to do something. This is my preference. And once I get that in there in place, I'm just using these clamps just to kind of hold it in place for a minute. All right, so we've got our shoes in, both of our pins, 
index properly. Next thing you want to do is get your adjuster, spring back in. This adjuster only goes one way in here. All right, these little hook pins that we took out before. Now we get back to my custom made screwdriver here. Push your spring in, get it clipped on. Pull your clamp off. Put your clamp off. Get the rest of your brake hardware on, your self adjusters. We're gonna get our uh, self adjuster bracket back in. Um, this cable goes underneath the spring. All right, so when you're putting this in, um, you'll notice there's a couple tabs, top and bottom. Um, those fit between the brake shoes, and that's actually what, when this, when you when you pull the or push the e-brake cable, it, it pulls this over and pushes the shoes out. So um, need to make sure we're getting those engaged in there properly. A couple love taps. You guys can hear that but we're starting to get a light drag now and that side's done now we're gonna tackle the other side Hi guys so we had a little bit of rust issue in here i cleaned it up the best i could i talked to the owner we're just gonna put it back together get some fresh fluid in there run it for a little while see what it looks like uh got all our surface cleaned up um got all the old gas material off cleaned it up real well and i've got a new rtv on the cover we'll just throw it on there um torque spec on these bolts for ford is 30 foot pounds so I'll just throw them on there also, um, with this being a limited slip diff, it takes friction modifier. You know, the Ford does recommend 75-140 for synthetic fluids. Two bottles of friction modifier is what you're gonna put in here. Putting our uh, second bottle of friction modifier in. All this plug is just a, just a pipe plug with 3 8 ratchet fits in it, so. All right, friction modifier in. Now we're gonna pump fluid. All right, so got fluid coming out the bottom. 
of the drain hole or the fill hole. Put our plug back in. All right, we'll throw the tires on this thing and, and it's time for a beer. <laughs> 